My name is Abe Van Mel. I'm the technical manager for the Canadian Beef Centre of Excellence. Today we're going to look at some of the cuts outside of the middle. Uh, the middle cuts are the cuts that are the more tender cuts that everybody's familiar with and, uh, and understands how to cook them. This particular cut is called the uh, chuck shoulder clawed. And uh, the chuck shoulder clawed is from the shoulder area of the animal. And uh, the shoulder area is a working muscle and uh, because of the amount of work it's always been considered to be uh, a, a fairly tough muscle. We found though, uh, by ordering this chuck shoulder clawed in this format, we have different parts that have different levels of tenderness. In this case we have a, a muscle that's been kind of left attached to the clawed and this is called the chuck uh, flat iron. Uh, and, and this chuck flat iron, uh, when, when meat scientists started to isolate some of the different muscles on the carcass, they, they, uh, they found after it was trimmed up and, and, uh, and properly, um, properly harvested, that it was uh, actually the second most tender muscle on the, on the beef animal. There's also a little section of short rib muscle that is unbelievably good for a, a short rib application. And then down in here, there's a little bit of the shoulder round bone section. The shoulder round bone was running across this way on this section. And uh, that is a little bit tougher and is excellent for utilized as a stew or uh, trim for uh, um, sausages or, or grinds. So we'll get busy and, uh, and start looking at some of these muscles and separating them. So the first piece that we're going to remove from the, the clawed area is uh, the top laid muscle and we're going to look for the natural seam and we're going to peel this. Top laid muscle away from the clawed. As I said a little earlier, uh, this section is actually top, uh, the top laid muscle on the blade section. It sits over top of the chuck roll. And there's two top laid muscles. Uh, this one's considered to be uh, the more tender one. And, uh, but it does take a little bit of work to get it to that point where we can really truly call it tender. Uh, there's a heavy membrane. This is where the blade bone was sitting. And that's got to be removed first. That's elastin. So we'll pull that off first. This does take some butchery skill but the results are certainly worth it. It's the same on this side. So I've removed that excess fat first and now it's removing the excess silver skin or that elastin sitting in underneath this. There is also a heavy membrane that runs right through the center of this muscle. And uh, that is a very, very heavy connective tissue. And it's critical that that is removed. And I'm basically letting my knife slide along it. My knife's telling me where it is. I think the biggest problem that we have with this particular cut, even after finding out about the tenderness and the, uh, the quality characteristics of the marbling that's in here, is that it just doesn't look very visually appealing. And, and that's, that's a bit of a problem for retail operations. How do you merchandise that? How do you make that look good? It would have to be in the service meat case. You have to be able to tell the story about this particular cut because it will not sell itself from a visual. So the story is about the, the, the science behind this particular cut. It's, it's telling, telling the story about, the butcher has to be able to tell that story about this cut with its tender, tenderness quotient, uh, with its eatability, with its marbling effect. They have to be able to tell, tell that story effectively to be able to sell that product. It's not going to sell in a, a self-serve meat case. You have to be able to tell that story. So that's one of the sections right there. That's harvested, ready to go uh, in, in food service. There's not an issue with it. Usually it's carved, and it's usually at a carving station. You can start second guessing it and thinking, well, I've got to take all of that out. Well, you don't need to. You, know? you need to get rid of that gristle line. All of the rest of this, including this little bit here, that's all, it's all fine. It can be generally, if you wanted to harvest this into about um, approximately three 180 gram portions on each steak. 
So the next section that we're going to take off is a short rib muscle. It's sitting down at the end, again following the natural seam. This is uh, a boneless short rib. It can be used for a stew or any application like that. It's a brazing product. There's a fair bit of fat that has to be removed from the top. This has got a really nice grain direction. You can sort of see the grains going in the same direction. So that's excellent. And we always cut across the grain. This would be an excellent short rib or a stewing product for food service or for retail. We're getting close to uh, the shoulder clod now, but we're not quite there yet. We still got one section to take out and that's the shoulder round bone section. It's actually half of it. The shoulder round, uh, round uh, bone, act, the actual bone is running across this way on this section. Again, there's a natural seam for that. So it's just a matter of peeling along the natural seam and taking that section off. This section here is quite tough. There's a lot of connective tissue, muscles running different directions in it. It's going to be a challenge in terms of getting any kind of roast or steak out of it. And we're not quite sure if the, the time is worth it. But that being said, there is some excellent, excellent stew capabilities or potential out of this particular section. So that's that shoulder section. I think the best application for it is as a stewing product. So now we're sitting here with our clod. This clod can be ordered in roughly this form uh, from the packer uh, without the other parts. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a higher price point, uh, but that being said, you're missing some really good opportunities with the stew that I showed you and especially that uh, flat iron section. That flat iron section harvested properly is the jewel in this particular section. It's the hidden gem. It's the product that we're looking for and, and creating a tremendous amount of value. This for the most part up until probably oh uh, 10 years ago was always used as a uh, as, as a braising product, as a roast. Either that or it was ground at the plants for the most part. It was not utilized for much other than, than uh, a braised product or for grinds. It's one of the least expensive parts of the carcass, of the beef animal, and consequently it's one of the toughest, it has the least value. But we have found by, by separating the top clod from the clawed heart, and that does take some work and it takes some butchery skill, you can create some pretty decent steaks, uh, steaks that perform, especially if this product is aged properly, to the level of a, probably a sirloin. So, but it does take some work to get it to that level. So let's have a look and, and get it there. So first of all, we're going to take off all of the heavy membrane that's sitting on the inside of it. And this is a lot of trimming. But what we have to do here is we have to isolate muscle grain. Because if we just process this or split it down through the center and then uh, create a gross, there'd be a lot of this heavy, heavy membrane that's on here and, and we wouldn't be able to isolate uh, the grain direction. So, it's the top part that I'm looking for in terms of uh, finding this this seam. So the clawed heart is sitting in underneath this muscle here. And you can see this membrane here. That's the seam. That's the seam that we're looking for. And it'll end abruptly. And then it's just cutting it off. 
So that's a top clod, and this is a clod heart. A lot of what I'm re removing is usable trim. Some isn't. But even from a cost perspective, just utilizing this section by staking it, or stewing it, or in this case making medallions out of it, what a wonderful opportunity. Now we've isolated it. You can see the grain directions running this way. So we can portion our medallions to whatever size that we want in terms of what it's going to look like after we stake it. We'll portion this in half. So here's our uh, top clawed muscle, and here's our clawed heart. Beautiful little medallions, or left as a roast. So uh, hopefully that'll help you with some of your decisions on how you purchase your product and what you can do with it.